ladies and gentlemen. I bless the name of the Lord for this prayer breakfast. Uh, this meeting that is dedicated to the prophetic birthing of a new nation. And I must thank the organizers of the coalition, the organizers like the Coalition of Intercessors and the Christian Association of Nigeria. And in particular, our leader and father of the Nigeria Praise Movement, General Yakubu Gowan, for the kind invitation and for his continuing commitment and dedication to this nation from his youth when he was head of state, when he led the fight to keep Nigeria warm, to his later years as an elder statesman, where his well-seasoned words uttered in godly wisdom have counseled our nation's leaders for decades. The theme of this prayer breakfast is the birth of a new nation. And it's an important one because as we all know, it comes at a time of great travail and tribulation for the nation. The nation in the throes of a pandemic for well over a year, leading to a severe economic downturn, loss of jobs and livelihoods. And as we climbed out of the recession, we have been faced with an unprecedented scale of insecurity in different zones of the nation. But for us, who are gathered here today, children of God, we see the invisible. We know that every time that a nation where the children of God live is challenged, it is God's call to his people to take action. It's an opportunity for God to demonstrate that he is God of other nations, that he is indeed the creator of the heavens and the earth, and that he knows the beginning from the end. But God also, as we know, wants us to know that he has ordained us to speak concerning the things that we want to see. Most of us, of course, are familiar with the scripture in Jeremiah 1, verse 9 to 10, where the scripture says, And the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Everywhere you look in scripture, the destiny of nations is in the hands of his children. From Zerubbabel to Nehemiah, we see ordinary men and women building nations at the direction of God and by prophetic action. Permit me to ground my remarks uh, this morning in a particular uh, in a particular story in the scriptures, and we'll find it in Second Kings chapter two, verse nineteen, all the way to twenty-two. I'll just read Second uh, Kings nineteen. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. 2 Kings chapter 2, 19 to 22. Verse 19. Then the men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice the situation of this city is unpleasant. As my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground barren. And in 20 he says, it says, And he said, Bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water and cast in the salt there and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. And in verse 22, So the water remains healed to this day according to the word of Elijah which he spoke. So scripture has consistently shown us that the children of God are central to the birth of a new nation, the rebirth of a nation. Almost everywhere you look in scripture, we find this repeated, and in this story it is so. The children of God must desire change. They must cry to God and be ready to make the sacrifice of repentance. In this story, the men of the city told the prophet of God, Elijah, see, this city is a nice and pleasant 
and prosperous place. But we cannot enjoy this our community. We cannot enjoy this nation because the water is bad. Because life is unsafe and the ground is barren. There is a serious economic problem. They did not go to an expert on environmental disasters. Yet they go to a politician. They went to God. And God directed his prophet who asked for a fresh new bowl, put salt in it, and went to the source of the water, the root of the problem, and poured in the salt. And God spoke, I have healed this water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. And so it shall be for our nation in Jesus' mighty name. But let us just unpack some aspects of the story. Salt is crucial to the birth of a new nation. Matthew 5 verse 13 says that you and I are the salt of the earth. So the salt is actually the children of God. As far as God is concerned, the responsibility for birthing the nation belongs to those who are called by his name. Which is why he said, and this has been repeated almost you know, today by practically every speaker. 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. The word of God does not agree with logic or with our thinking. God is saying here that it is not the nation that repents. It is, only, it is his own people who are called upon to repent and turn from their evil ways. It is not the nation that is called upon to turn from its evil ways. That is not the logic of God. God's logic is that his own people must turn from their evil ways. As we are the salt, so are we the light. And the light ends the darkness. It marks the end of a night of weeping and, the, and marks the glorious sunlight of the morning of joy. So the pouring of salt into the source of the water, the source of the problem, is the prophetic act that we perform today. We, the salt, are also poured today by prayer and prophecy into the source of our nation's problems. Amen. And as we pray and prophesy, a new nation will be birthed. Amen. One where, like the city to which Elisha went, the land was healed, the people prospered, and peace and joy prevailed. So I speak these words also to our nation. Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. Amen. From it there shall be no more death or violence. Amen. And after the healing of the land, we are told, in verse 22, we are told that the water remains healed to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. And we say the same words for our nation as well. That this nation, there is a birthing of a new nation. Amen. That the nation has already been birthed. Amen. There is no question about that. Amen. God, the way that God reveals things is always, and well, depending on who it is, in pictures, in forms, and for some in visions, from where it's from, from my bedroom, I can see the rock, as a rock, huge rock. I can see it very clearly, just lying down on my bed. I can see it. Once I open the window, I can see it just right far away or right in front of me. I can see it. But there are times when it is completely covered by clouds, completely. Such that if I open my window, I cannot see it at all. I cannot see it at all. As a matter of fact, if I had come into that room on a day when I didn't know that the rock was there, I'd have assumed that there was no rock there, big as the rock is. That metaphor is the same for our nation. The nation, the new nation is birthed already. Amen. It is covered by a cloud, but the cloud will clear. Amen. And God Almighty will be will take all of the glory Amen. for the birthing of this nation. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you.